uh, well and I will share this bootstrap project at the moment uh, from GitHub with you in the uh, in the live discussion I don't know if you have access to this otherwise just wait a second if you haven't received it you can use either the QR code or or can you read this github.com can we use the QR code as well? Yeah, of course. <coughs> so, and if you want to, you can also come closer. So, I mean, it's just like... I will. I think we have enough space. <laughs> I guess so, yes. <laughs> so, and the URL, I guess, if you have... I copied it yet, uh, just like uh, github.com slash uh, Lia Playground. So it's our playground for uh, different uh, yeah, like demonstrations or examples from Lia script and the project is actually called uh, OEB-2003. If you have opened it, open it, it, so just give me a hint. Okay. So I said that will be an interactive session. If you want to, these our materials is uh, it's written in Markdown or Lia script. So you can either consume this directly if you click on the first link as a presentation as a Lia script course by yourself. But we encourage you to click on the second link or the third link. I mean the uh, OEB Live Editor. So if you click on this you will probably see the same result as I do. So, and the idea, all the te te technology, all the projects that we show uh, are actually mostly browser-based entirely. So if you edit, create content, this is done within the browser. It's not stored somewhere else. So where does the content reside? Actually in your browser. And if you have opened this uh, editor at the moment, there, if you're on mobile, probably, you can switch to full edit mode, it's easier, splits if you have a, a laptop or you can just sit next to someone with a laptop or you can just have a look at this. So on the first thing, so I just shared the URL of this markdown document and if you want to make it your copy or your personal copy, uh, it's like written in here, you have to click on this fork button. So in this case, the content uh, that's taken from the URL from the web uh, somewhere from the web is copied into your browser into your uh, project and it's generated into and it generates a new URL like an edit one and if you go back for example uh, you see there's a new yeah there are multiple uh, uh, tra tried it around but multiple documents serverless education uh, I can change the content O E B. 2003, either Control S for compiling or simply click on this uh, link and your course is actually updated. So this is just a basic idea. So and the topic for today is after yeah, we'll try to give a short introduction and motivation. We will start with the basics. We try to create an interactive course based on the script and Markdown. I don't have some one of you heard of Markdown so far. No, but uh, all of you use it. Uh, if you're using ChatGPT and some, I'll show it uh, to you later. Uh, then we'll show something that is possible also for you if you use an app or if you plan to create a website or something like this. What well, is a progressive web app? It's just like a website that can be actually installed within the browser or installed like a native app. So this is automatically also included uh, in this case. And then, uh, what's our purpose in this? We uh, don't like the idea of centralized uh, services or centralized server because they can go down or someone has to pay for it. And the idea is if you want to have uh, sustainable educational content, uh, you have to distribute it a couple of times, make a couple of uh, copies, repositories stored on, uh, store it on different repositories, like uh, one is stored now within your browser. If you go offline or I take the, ser uh, the website down, change something, you can still access this content probably. I'll show. I'll explain the technologies uh, later a bit and then uh, what was our latest or our previous so at the beginning we started to create an 
language that can be used to create educational content quite easily, interactive online courses. Uh, and then was it uh, like the idea to bring students, uh, learners uh, closer together by creating classrooms where we also used or try to use browser technology that's already available within the browser so that you can create classrooms without a login just in a peer-to-peer -peer browser based fashion where you can use different uh, back-end systems and technologies. I'll explain this, we will try this out probably if you want to uh, with your uh, colleagues and peers and then afterwards what's our latest research is actually uh, sharing hardware. So if everything goes fine till the end, uh, I hope that we can also share this tiny little Arduino that, you can, that is possible to access this or program this uh, just and the technology used is again only browser based on most cases. So we already, yeah, Professor Zuck, the head of the research group. My name is André Dietrich and so I, I guess you all have now created your own copy of the course just by clicking on the fork, right? So you, you can always go back to this LIA edit uh, view in this case and just have a look at your courses, you create new ones, but we will do this also later. So just switch to presentation mode. So probably I already said something about our motivation, but our main motivation is to get rid of those uh, centralized services that are actually like, if you're using some kind of learning management system, it actually represents, it's a closed island. It may be open source, but actually it requires a login uh, for you as a teacher to create content. It requires some, uh, probably you have to pay for it. It requires a login for your students uh, that want to get access to this content and then the server goes down and there are a lot of uh, examples actually where there was data or this educational content uh, is actually all has been lost in germany there was a research um, done by the german ministry of education and research probably and they checked how many of the educational projects they financed up to 2014 actually still existed and they found out that most, uh, like up to 50% uh, of the educational content and the platforms that have been developed or the content that was created is gone, it's simply lost because there's no financing anymore and the people leave go and go to other projects and nobody is maintaining it. So our previous idea was to take this educational content out of the uh, platform. So you can store it everywhere and share it with uh, wh whom you ever like to. So where is it stored? Is it in the cloud somewhere? or You can store it. You can store it in your Dropbox, actually not next cloud. You can store it on GitHub. You can use, we uh, show you say later, some distributed uh, storages that you can use. You, you can have your own web space, like, like on your own website, where you just simply put in this text document, a uh, text document that you will see that you will also edit in. So you only have to put it into and then uh, to link I will show this also afterwards. I give the link to the LeaScript website. It's a PVA. Uh, it's a like an app residing in the browser, and it grabs the content and directly interprets it and stores it uh, for later usage, also offline. So in this case, we try to be as agnostic as possible for storing content. Yeah. But there's also, if you're interested in, there's another tool. Uh, you can also export this probably into SCORM that you can upload your course into an LMS or something like this if you want to. But we encourage you uh, to open source uh, yeah, your education. Another way around. I mean, I have some SCORM packages. So can I? No, <laughs> that's too difficult actually. So I said to you just uh, as a quick uh, introduction. Uh, how does it look like? This is an example of a markdown document. It's actually the idea was to have a simple markup language notation that can be used by everyone to create uh, content for fast blogging actually at the beginning. Then it was adapted for, uh, uh, how to say, for, for uh, documentation for uh, uh, open source projects. So every open source project on GitHub has probably a markdown readme file. This is the basic where you add this. Uh, fun information about how to use this project and what to do and we simply use the same 
you don't uh, add a markdown that is describing your project. We add a markdown that is your course actually. So this is the basic idea. So and uh, it was done by humans, and they wanted to uh, that it's readable by humans. So it's not uh, uh, some in a binary format somehow. Even if you translate it, you need some kind of um, proprietary hardware, or something like the or software. I mean, in this case, so if you translate it, you all the only thing you need is actually a text editor and a keyboard, and you can start to edit this. And if you want to, uh, we'll do this in a moment, so you can just like. Uh, a new header or headline starts with a hashtag. Then you can have a text, like an abstract, uh, that was called a paragraph, in this case with some highlighting. Oh. So and the results look actually quite the same. So you have these uh, point list actually with which does the same as you see. Uh, when we do some italic, it's just like uh, we, we add some notations to the text, like underscore and dashes or star stars and asterisks uh, to highlight this content. And actually, the markdown interpreter will interpret this similarly. And if you create a table, uh, like in this case with two rows, it will generate an HTML table. So the basic idea was to have uh, next to HTML uh, an easy language for people to use and to create online content so this is it and so you can also do formulas add images and stuff like this uh, so quite easy so we'll experiment with this in a minute and the idea behind Leah script was uh, we use this originally for creating our own courses for our uh, robotic labs in this case but we needed more interactivity so basic markdown is just for <coughs> static text writing so uh, that's it and uh, we wanted to do something like that. You can also have quizzes in there. You can do some uh, online programming. We want to extend this in this case. So, and we built up on this idea of this markdown syntax. Uh, you can see uh, it's actually everywhere, really. And uh, we want to extend this. So that's also for other people that are not, have another technical background. It should be quite easy to create educational content or fancy online courses. So now I have here an example, probably, if you're using ChatGPT or something else, I use Find as an open successor. So uh, stored some prompts, probably, you generate me a table of the most, of the five most important learning management systems. How does it look like? So this is using ChatGPT in the background, it's depending on a uh, the amounts of ChatGPT 4 or 3 and if everything works well take some seconds so it's actually not that uh, what I wanted to have it it's just like it's not in a table or structure so the last one is coming Table. I hope that works. Uh, probably I should have paid some amount uh, for this demonstration. I think the others are using the same. I'll just create another one. Let's wait for this answer. So it generates some kind of table as you see this. Uh, so it's well organized, well structured. If you copy this, it's also done the same uh, with ChatGPT. Where am I? Where are my prompts? If I copy the content, you see that it looks like somewhat similar to a markdown table. So I compile this. Well, it is a markdown table. Actually, what ChatGPT is uh, printing out is also markdown. So it's basically, you can use also the markdown syntax in a Moodle editor. You can use this markdown syntax also in uh, aspects of it within your WhatsApp uh, to highlight or make some text bold if you want to. And there was another. 
So it's not that uh, well formatted, but it's not the case. And you can also generate, if you want to, probably some kind of uh, images. Take another one. So because this is the idea, we'll we will uh, together create a course about cooking noodles or alphabet noodles, and I would simply add a generate an ASCII art sequence diagram for cooking a soup. So what does it put out? Ah, so it didn't get me uh, right. So this is actually possible, uh, but this uses plant UML, which is a bit of code. No, as, uh, Okay, it's not the one that I actually wanted to, but I can also try to copy this. So this looks like a, a bit of a code environment, uh, what mostly is. And if you, if we want to have a code environment uh, in Markdown, we simply have to use three backsticks. We'll copy this into in here and. We've created, okay, it's not the most beautiful ASCII art image actually, but it's also possible so that uh, ChatGPT cannot only generate your images with some kind of fancy library like plant UML that you have seen, but you can also use ASCII art. as an early kind if you only have a, a keyboard, probably how you can generate diagrams. So quite an easy way. So in this case, not the most beautiful way. So if you are interested in, we have some additional materials, so some information about the project, some documentation, tooling. If you want to use another editor uh, than this one, a few examples uh, that you can explore uh, or try have a look at them. Uh, contact us via email, Twitter, or chat. So, and if you are now ready, we can start to uh, cook our own or to create a course. Uh, on creating uh, alphabet soup. So this is just a basic idea. So uh, just think about it, it's just uh, a normal text, uh, add some kinds of ingredients, uh, how to chop uh, the ingredients, probably some a list about this. Uh, we get here some additional information and we want to turn this into a, something like a nice course. If you all have opened the same thing, so if you have opened the course so far, you only have you done so I can go back to so if you're coming either from this one from this playground then you haven't opened it this just like this like I showed uh, the live editor presentation and you only have to click on fork and you generate a copy of this course or if you want to, uh, you can try this out by your own. Simply go back, create a new node. My personal course. Control this and start to uh, make some notes if you want to. So just for. So, but the basic idea at the moment. So this content is not well structured. So it's just an uh, example so that you get an idea, uh, so you uh, get to know the syntax a bit. So, but the uh, headlines actually start with an uh, A, A1, A2, B, B2. And in my case, if you open the uh, table of contents, everything is put into one. And what you now have to do is probably to add this content. Uh, simply uh, to create a new section uh, about this and we want to a section is defined by an its own header so you can do either add an uh, hashtag in front of it and as you see okay there's always cl closing so this is a big one we want to have this actually as a sub section of this tutorial alphabet so the only thing that we have to do is take care that it uh, has one hashtag or probably so I compile this. Uh, there is a uh, tutorial on alphabet soup. And the A1 probably should be a subsection of the upper one. So what we you can also do is like we added some buttons to make it easier. 
you simply click five times, click on the rebuild and have this uh, basics actually as its own section uh, divided and the other ones. So and simply uh, go on with this just like one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. And five or six. B has only four. One, two, three, four. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Well, it's a bit so we will add some music to our cooking afterwards. Uh, some augmented reality applications or views, not applications actually. We will do some uh, more formatting. So, like in three, how to uh, four, how to do uh, present the same content in different variations to use it as a, a textbook uh, for reading only, or to create something like an uh, to use it for a presentation, or with automatic text to speech output. And then afterwards we will generate like a small program that helps us to calculate the ingredients or the right amount uh, for, for, for our soup. So I simply recompile this in case I'm actually ready. I divided my content into a couple of sections. Can you see this? So yours should actually look similar. If you uh, like it differently or just uh, want to add this or change this afterwards, just... So right now we're just doing headers, right? Yeah. How many hashtags there are? Six. It's just like you have a kid and can have at most six. Yeah. And yeah. it's defined actually by the uh, HTML standard which yeah. has H1 to H6 for headers. So, so okay. Yeah. yeah all right. But you can actually yeah, afterwards restyle it if you want to have a more important uh, to have a more important section you can just go back so and make it a header one or something like this or uh, divide uh, like different uh, like chapters. Okay. So what you can also do is like if you double click uh, onto the uh, onto the preview, you should actually jump into the with the editor into the uh, associated line and the basics. Or if you oh, it's not working, not correctly. I was not jumping into the basics. Okay, there's a little uh, miscalculation, so it's close by to the actual position where I clicked onto it. So, and the first thing, as you can see, uh, if I go back to uh, the basics, so every markdown block or your script block is actually separated by a new line. It's just like a visual feature for you. Uh, so, uh, if you can have one or you can have multiple if you want to, uh, if you prefer this, but it's just like a visual hint for you. These are separated blocks and they will be also separated, like in this case. So, you can have multiple lines if I add this close together, I recompile this, so this will be a single block and then the other one yeah, will be a separate one. So, but the first thing that you can do is probably to highlight uh, just like the uh, minutes to make it probably bold all, uh, all the times. So, I simply add this, where is the bold? I want to have this bold, so it uses underscore, underscore, or you can use the same syntax like with stars it depends what you uh, prefer actually it's just like a visual hint for you so this might be a more important part and uh, if you want to have italic so this is the basic idea I can use single underscores if I want to have it bold I use a double underscore or double asterisk and uh, if I want to have it uh, italic and bold I have to triple the amount so and in between I can also use something like if minutes should be 
bold as the only one I can just like uh, combine this as you can see a minute is now bold uh, but uh, also italic so the idea is just everything that you learn simple patterns actually you can apply to nearly every markdown block so it's only a bit of repeating uh, all the time so you can if you want to you can also experiment with some other highlightings like underscore or underline which are tildes double tildes uh, which actually use the same if I want to uh, strike through, I use one tilde, otherwise two, and, and the same way also three, and combine it, can combine this also uh, with this bold, bold syntax. So it's not that visible, but width is now bold, and the other one is uh, strike through. So you got so either you use the editor or you know the yeah. So it's basically this was a bit uh, helpful to the audience. We added yeah. this uh, after our last e-learning Africa mm -hmm. session, where people just uh, was a bit difficult uh, to explain everything, and some people got it wrong. But now with these yeah function buttons, actually, it should be easier. So it's quicker if you just type. It in yeah. It's remarkable to do the switch in the in your head. Yeah. We add an explicit annotation to our text is related to its formatation. So we want to describe in which way it should be highlighted, structured, etc. Mm -hmm. So the formatting becomes part of the document and it's explicitly now. And if my students say, hey, I would like to emphasize a certain part, then they can write an or generate a new version where I can recognize, oh, someone added some formatting symbols in a way that the code fragment is more visible or an explanation is added, added by some formatting. What is the advantage of using this instead of HTML or or something to format it? Uh, it's easier to read and uh, actually than HTML. The HTML can be quite complicated because you can see this is uh, much harder to parse if you uh, create a parser for this, uh, but it's actually easier to write. It's uh, more human friendly. Yeah. That's a really good question. We have to balance both things. Yeah. High flexibility, which can be um, achieved by using HTML and JavaScript on one hand, and a very limited capability of such a text if I'm using kind of uh, description language with only some keywords or formatting opportunities. So we looked for a, a, a nice uh, yeah, a combination of both worlds uh, that ensures a readability without any additional editor and an extendability by dynamic parts that is necessary for motivating learning content and we will give some hints or some examples later. Uh, we do not stay at the markdown level with static content uh, so far, but it, this Elia script extends this idea. Okay. Okay. And that's also why you can't uh, copy from your existing LMS to this. Yeah. But you so can copy the other way around. Yeah. Uh, but you, yeah, you have to do copy yeah. and paste and do the formatting manually in this case. If you're going coming from PowerPoint, so in link this way, you copy the text into a text file, add the formatting, and then you can just share it uh, for free with everyone to store it or host it. Mm -hmm. It's much easier to export the yeah. script or document to an LMS uh, mm -hmm. presentation than other directions. The HTML tags, they are descriptive, like you can see if, if something is like a section then you, within the section and if something is a is a heading, uh, you have page format. So they could also like provide context because right now I'm writing hashtags but if I'm seeing this for the first time I'm like yeah. why are there no. hashtags? You are yeah. to still use HTML code inside the in script. So if you are convinced if you're convinced that it's necessary, then you are free to include some sections of HTML directly in the document. But in many cases, if you are not so familiar with the technical backgrounds, you are very happy that you have a restricted um, aspect for formatting. <laughs> what are the features like? Can I create quiz? Yeah. 
discussion yep. with the students. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. Well, Michelle, and come to this uh, uh, later. So just like we can uh, go fast to the other ones. So this is like an ingredient list. If you go to the next one, A1, and if you want to make it a list, just highlight this and where is it? I can either add stars in front of it. So this is actually interpreted like a. We've seen there there are some buttons or some helpers for this list or numbered list. If I compile this, so you either get this list. If you want to nest this, so you have to separate this. Uh, I simply have to take care of the indentation or indentation. So to make it a nested one. So in this case, and you can have multiple paragraphs also added into the seconds. Uh, just space for yeah. Right. So uh, this second paragraph, it could be an image, it could be a video, it can be everything is then added to uh, uh, this second one. And what you also can do is probably if we, oops, like separate this. Is it smart enough? I oh, know. So you see, and here have a numbered list just by adding numbers in front of it. So this is the point, and you can do the same. Also, add some with some additional indentation. You can mix, and this is the uh, power of Markdown. Actually, if you are aware of the syntax, we can actually add also a, an ASCII art image or some kind of table to this. Ah no, it's just like a syntax highlighting. It's not. Uh, it's actually not right, but uh, but the okay. thing uh, things. Uh, this is the editor uh, doing wrong. It thinks uh, this is a piece of code. Okay. So we get back to. In this situation, the benefit come of use compared to the HTML syntax. In this way, it would be it would include much more uh, code fragments and text right. in this scenario. Yeah. So I guess actually like if you were uh, making a list in uh in Marshall Berg and it immediately recognizes like, oh you could use the a dash so <laughs> I'll make a uh, an orange list or or a one that and then it will make it. Yep. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Exactly. So uh if you have done this just to uh, create a list or play it around with it. So I guess the idea is clear. So we can get simply to the next one. So you already have uh, seen this tables. So in this case, but the script actually can add an another feature to tables. If we create this as a table, probably I simply add those horizontal lines to it, separate those cells. So this is the header with minus, 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 minus. We close this. So we've created this nice little table, but oh, I'm too far. But it adds some kind of feature, like oh, it looks like a bar chart. So if you, are, in some cases, if you have numbers within your table, so it might that you are actually actually try to express, or you you have a certain data set. So and there are certain rules that we added to it, so that Lea script actually tries to identify. Oh, this data set could be actually, if we want to, I can display this as a bar chart. So these are the groups actually and these are the values. Uh, so uh, so you can have something like this, oh my nutrition in most cases it's uh, calories. So you can add a new grams, I don't know, uh, joule. Oops, this was once too much. Like, I don't know. 32, 12 joules or whatsoever. If I compile this, I go back to it. So, okay, it's still a bar chart, but we have different groups. So, in place, and we can play around with it. 
so we can order it like after co uh, carbon hydrates I don't know what are grams water play around with it depending on different visualizations that you have to you can explore actually or play around with the data so this is just like an easy example but there are also different variations of for visualizations and if you want to you can either close this off uh, i don't want to have a visualization or you simply uh, select for your table the most appropriate one so this is actually some, there's a part within the document, documentation if you're interested in. Uh, it lists the, uh, a couple of different visualization styles. Okay, <laughs> I skip, no, no, I'm just, uh, if you're done, I'm just uh, going fast to the other ones uh, so that we can go to the uh, fancy or, uh, yeah, more interactive part. So correct citing, actually, if you have a, text that you want to highlight this is um, very important actually or this has been said by some person they are probably all aware of uh, this notation like whether you get an email and you refer 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 to this email so you would do this with a, a larger sign or how is it called so we'll add this into a block so this additional line if we want to add this wikipedia for example to this block we simply this is just like an, a one-liner so there's why there are no uh, new lines actually added. And so this should be the entire block. So Wikipedia is now in there. So and if this could be a famous person that has said a quote or something like this, so we can also highlight this by two dashes and we'll treat this a bit different. So this is done by, said by Mahatma Gandhi or who, whatever. So just the idea. So you all, I guess, aware of this uh, notation already uh, from email and this was the the basic idea behind this so simply a larger sign so where is the text from actually it's taken all the our cooking experience that we had uh, just like uh, and this is the only thing that you have to remember for mail spam then we'll skip I guess to the interactive part uh, so or to the sharing part uh, of course this uh, link is a bit ugly so I just want to have that uh, this source or somewhere within the text uh, should be representing uh, the link the word how you use like a named link so you only have to know that you are using those uh, brackets and then parentheses which contain the URL so this is basically the named URL syntax so that's it and if you want to have highlight a picture for example I go over to the next one so and you can also click on this you simply mark this and we have there this picture notation i want to generate an image link out of it yeah uh, it's not copied ah uh, damn it i thought so no so it's replacing it uh, i think we have to fix this so this is just like bootstrap you can do the same and just highlight uh with an uh, exclamation mark so this is an important link and what is it what will happen then so we'll add the, or integrate the picture or the image so you can do this for all those images if you want to so now we have like three images in a row and if we want to create something they are separated by dashes if we want to have them like in a gallery we simply create a paragraph out of multimedia content if you want to so all the images are uh, so there's simply a new line and then uh, a nice gallery is actually created out of it so again okay in the editor so the basic idea and the same is done for music you can then I'll show only with once where we this is one thing that the script adds it's simply if images are uh, exclamation mark then probably the question mark looks like an ear if I compile this oh this is the embedding the markdown eh? no open Spotify uh, Spotify is not working anymore so uh, the idea was uh, 
there's another thing that you can do so sometimes you're not aware of uh, whether the contents uh, is it an image is it a video or something else so you can use this uh, question mark question mark uh, as a trick so if you want to embed YouTube or from another resource some uh, content to your course you simply add two question marks if you're aware of this is a sound and like with SoundCloud it works uh, so just one and if you want to do like a video it's an information mark question mark and basically the same image notation like for video and for more fancy stuff as I said it's just like question mark question mark there's a sketch fat 3d model I'm absolutely not aware of what it is I will add the same so it takes a bit in this case this is a 3d model that's embedded into your course or well, there's some kind of yeah physical simulation where students can probably just like found somewhere in the internet uh, that you can directly import into your course so I will skip this presentation format but the thing uh, that I want to, uh, you to be aware of is that you have an additional notation uh, where you can I will have this uh, on use this on the later slides where you can mark specific blocks actually as uh, this is a kind of animation this uh, should be added into step one and uh, step two or you can change uh, add some additional comments to this or you can do some uh, uh, read it either as a textbook format uh, or or use it in a presentation so if you go into the going back to the video script documents probably kitab uh, video script copy link oh there's another nice one so you can do some fancy animations if you want to uh, bit of a start with the script so this is in a textbook mode so in most cases it's just plain text uh, but you can write this also that it's in a, a presentation so text is spoken out loud or you can have these are slides those comments are actually that were presented before or within the content uh, or now just like a text note and if you want to with LeoScript, we try to implement an extended markdown format that should enable everyone to create, share, adapt, translate. There are a couple of problems that we currently see in the creation. So this is just the basic idea, a text format, text to speech engine, uses the browser technologies, automatically generated, and you have one format, one text format that generates at the moment three different kinds of visualization if you want to for you. So there's a either a slides mode with comments presentations only where you simply shut uh, the sound off or just simply as a textbook mode where the content that's spoken out loud is presented in between so the notation is quite easy but we'll skip this for the moment this is the last one that I want to share so if you are uh, see format animations comment so this is just like a program written in JavaScript, uh, which calculates the number of ingredients actually per person or just makes us, uh, if we want to use this, probably you have to use three backticks uh, and surround your content by this. So, and then the script and markdown will note, okay, so the space and the indentation should stay as it is. So this is code. So three backticks or you can use in here the uh, code environment so this one is a code block I think if you surround this with this one and add code block to it it will add these additional backticks to it so 
And one thing that you can use afterwards, just like, okay, I know it's JavaScript, so you can write down JavaScript, compile it, and s use JavaScript syntax highlighting. So, but the thing is, if it's JavaScript, why not directly uh, interpreting or executing this within the browser? And so what you can do with Leo script is that you can add an additional script tag. So this is basically the idea behind this. And there you can add some additional code or if it's directly JavaScript, uh, you can also inter uh, interpret this. And there's this macro usage is just a substitution. So there's always this input. So everything that is here goes in here. Otherwise you can, if there's C code and you want to uh, send it to another server or something like this and do the, uh, do the compilation and stuff like this, so you can put this into a string and send this over and do some more coding in this script. But there, if I run this now, so you can read this little execute button in there. So what happens now is just oh for my persons, for 10 guests or per people it was four, Let's make the calculation for 40 people. Uh, just rerun it. Ah, I don't know why it's in my editor not working from time to time. But it's uh, only a thing of the editor uh, programming the cooking. So I get 10, I add this to 40. So and you see uh, the numbers have changed and you can go back and forth between your versions. So and just like an easy way if you're doing JavaScript programming, or we can also have templates for different kinds of programming. So I'll go back to and show this to what's more to this is, uh, you can also use music, for example, music notation for programming. So in this case, there is no script uh, below, it's just this ABC uh, JS evil. So this is a macro call, it's just like a substitution, but the script doesn't know what to do with this at the moment. So, but, uh, so all the functionality is directly uh, added into in within another markdown document, and you can add this to the head of your document. So the functionality that is implemented uh, within this course somewhere else, I want to reuse this uh, within mine. So ah, so now it knows, uh, knows what happens, so what to do with this piece of code. And so you can create music notations. You can program. <coughs> play around with it. But it's just like. Yeah. Okay, it's not working again. I have to reload this so to work, but uh, in the original earlier script if it's not in the editor working so it's a bit tricky but if you transfer this uh, course to your content so you can have as multiple versions of this code content it could be about programming it could be about uh, writing and applying text and stuff like this so and if you would need additional functionality we can easily import this so everything that's possible within the browser uh, it's possible in here and I encourage you to have a look at the templates So this is just a list of, at the moment, 40 different libraries for chemical structures, so mechanical engineering, tile 3, 3D programming, Spark UL, okay, in our case most of the time programming, but whatever you want to, you can also do that. So, okay, now let's get back to the next one. If you have a fully fledged uh, workshop, this is a recording of the eLearning Africa workshop, like a full day workshop, uh, it's edits, uh, you can, uh, yeah learn more about layer script and syntax and not that fast if you want to and so the next thing I'll switch to the presentation mode again so you can have a little glimpse on where was it where's the web app so this is just like the idea for animation stuff we add these bubbles uh, and if I switch to presentation mode without text I go to the next one so one thing the first thing that we used actually was this progressive web app I don't know if you're aware of this term yeah it's an yeah installable website actually that also runs offline so if I 
yeah what will happen probably if I close my internet connection I still have access to all of my content and edit it and share it uh, do whatever you want to or still offline Google does not work Google still fail but you can go back to the clear script website for course probably and will load so this is also a PVA so where you consume the content so and uh, it's basically all the stores all the co courses that I've opened so far are stored within the browser together with the website and I can serve as online education this was the little script documentation a little bit further for quizzes uh, and still there I can do my quizzes I can work with my content I have to load it only once and if I'm online it actually checks if you update something in the course you can have a version number into it has the version changed no I take the course uh, take the content I've cached already uh, otherwise I try to load uh, and display the newly created content so this is just the basic idea of progressive web apps they are installable they have more control about the cache what is cached those images in this case well yeah it's also possible for videos but not uh, in our case it's too big uh, but it has to be loaded once and it stalls the web page what means installing the most Sorry? Can you guys develop this yeah. Oh. So I just uh, get an internet connection again. And so here you have also, like in Chrome, or if you're using this on your Android, you can simply click on the install. And of course, I've now installed this Lia script uh, editor. And also, the, I can install the Lia script reader if you want to as a native app. So it's now in my the script editor and I can, re can reopen it actually whenever I want to so there is no need to go to a play store or something else if you so you create the educational content with Leo script uh, it will be there also if your users or students are offline otherwise if you want to create your own website so it's a good idea to have it's not a big of a deal uh, to make a PBA out of it so in this case so the only thing I have to go back to So I can still open it in here. Go back to my latest version. But this one was works in Africa because of internet problems. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Ah. So they are connected at school, and yeah. afterwards they are able to rerun the content based on a non-internet connection at home. Yeah, it's amazing. So and if they fill out the forms in the this is stored within their browser. Okay. So so when they have a connection again. Uh, it's possible to create a classroom where you can exchange uh, anonymously if it's in this case but it's not that uh, there's a central authority so if you create a classroom all persons or people are equal in this case so you cannot check it is actually for personal learning if you want to have more control you have to yeah compile or transpile this into a, a scoring package that you can upload into an uh, uh, LMS so in this case but then you have total control you know, on uh, where, when did he, uh, did which course or which which uh, quizzes in this case, and how many points uh, he or she received in this case. So when you have an individual student that is online for a certain period of time, mm -hmm. and they go back online, it's not. Uh, so so the, the classroom is actually not uh, in there at the moment, so we have to open this. But afterwards, just like uh, all the content that is shared, uh, so the states about quizzes, about coding, about surveys, uh, that is shared anonymously. So you are actually not uh, aware of. So if you are just two, you actually know who the other one's uh, yeah. results is. So, but uh, if you're a thousand, then it's difficult. Yeah, a thousand will be a difficult, as you <laughs> see. So, which means like if there are any assignments, needs to be collected from the students. That's a bit tricky, I guess. Yeah. So in this case, you have to use an LMS, but you can translate uh, your it's courses. Just for one way. Yeah. Sharing courses. So in, yeah, sharing courses, but we can also uh, we use this in the uh, also within the lectures, probably to clear to create something like if you uh, uh, like another service, I'll show it to you in a, a few seconds. So if you have an LMS. Uh, yeah, we use it. You, you can create this situation that the student can be offline for some time, make it, it's assignment. Uh, when it ah, no, that's actually not possible at the moment. So, 
So, uh, so then he uh, has to access or has to access uh, to the LMS all the time in this mm -hmm. case. So it's not that this thing is stored then or within a PVA or stored within the browser. So no, it's not possible. So this is the LMS and if you lose the contact to the server in this case, mm -hmm. so all the benefits are gone actually. So, so you cannot uh, uh, okay. see the content. So, so the, the, the offline part of it, it's only for seeing, not doing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But you can still program, you can use all the interactive elements if they are not connected to the internet. Such things as and presented with the JavaScript code, of course, in this case, still program all the content is running in the browser of the user. Mm -hmm. But of course, if you are connected with an external server or mm -hmm. whatever, then you need the internet connection. Yeah. Right? Because the their state is then stored within the LMS, so that's the okay. point, and the I content is loaded. I, I ask this question because some of our students are not allowed to connect to the internet mm -hmm. uh, because, for instance, they are in prison. So okay. in prison, there's no internet connection. Ah. They are traveling all around the world on a boat. Yeah, but then it's a uh, it's a nice uh, uh, solution maybe. So they load once with an internet connection, afterwards can consume offline their educational content, right? Yeah, that's the idea. Mm. That's the idea. Yeah. yeah. If there is no background service mm -hmm. required for, I'm not sure, checking the quality of the code or whatever, mm -hmm. then you are completely free to build your own history in code in, in content. Yeah, but at some point you want to see what the student has done. Yeah. Ah, yeah, but then you can create some like a, a, ship, a classroom, like the, just the two of you, mm -hmm. and in this case, and then you will see his results probably just like an online. So this so is possible. A, a personal classroom. That's what yeah. you're creating. Yeah. Okay. So this is also possible. So now just uh, the idea. So where do you store your content? So where is the content that you store? Actually, mm -hmm. now it's in the browser. So, but you can use also decentralized service like okay git doesn't sound uh, pretty decentralized uh, because you're using mostly github uh, to store your content but it actually uh, everyone that's engaged with git or that is using git is actually creating a total copy of the entire contents of the project so even if github goes down so you have the entire code and um, the like, entire history and can if you make changes afterwards also resync with a repository that was centralized in git so and as we store most of the content also in git i just switch to the another one so sharing is like uh, actually done so the only thing that we need is actually this markdown document so in not case that it's not presenting the markdown document but the raw document the actual text file this has to be shared so in this case it's like i uh, clicked on the raw link so the url looks a bit different you have to copy this uh, and if you go to the the script website probably if you enter this so this is now from github you say the url is just like the course grab the course from this url so in this case it's on github and so the pva actually it's no not a server it's just like the browser knows now this is the uh, browser url parameter okay i want to i try to uh, fetch this course uh, i get it and i parse and interpret it and store this uh, content and create a new course content so that's the idea so the easiest way to have a uh, large store for educational content and uh, that's free and cheap actually you have to don't have to pay for it is git but you can do also other uh, stuff that i want to Yes, yes, uh, we, we, we try to also for the quizzes uh, that you generated in, uh, we'll do a quiz afterwards. Uh, so, so we try to take care to be as accessible as possible. And if there are some features like the editor, the code editor was not accessible. So we get some feedback uh, from a student from Brazil so that he cannot escape the uh, editor anymore. So and we, oh, we weren't aware of this. So and we have to check this and now the editor probably is also uh, accessible so they can uh, read out the content in this case. So yeah we try to improve also this uh, kind of feature so I said git and there is this IPFS IPNS I don't know if you have heard of this so it's like a distributed Dropbox in this case like a 
it's a peer-to-peer -peer network where you can store uh, your content and the idea is just some browser are actually already uh, implementing this protocol na next to HTTP, HTTPS and uh, uh, what was the other for uh, files like for example Brave browser so I uh, forget if you want to download your content actually and you want to store it uh, so what we can do we go back to the editor here's a menu we can download this as a zip project uh, you store this somewhere within yeah downloads oh. okay I don't know where I store this so this is basically and what I forgot to do ah uh, it's a shame. So uh, what I actually wanted to do is that you have this uh, editor is also collaborative. So if you want to, so we are now offline and you have different possibilities probably. I will talk about this in a few seconds. And you have this uh, web RTC connection uh, that can be used in the browser to create direct connection. Or in most uh, networks it will if your uh, administrator like in this network is not that friendly. Uh, so this is closed, uh, this service, you can go to the web socket stuff we simply the URL has changed I'm the only user who is online you can create or try this also out uh, by your own so we'll create a QR code probably no this is completely free it's uh, separate from github it's just like uh, it's using and, 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 and uh, it's actually based on the web torrent network so that we used uh, for finding now we use this link probably so that you can see this so you can see the entire educational content is there so I will skip to this one and what I want to do now is probably just like what you can also do uh, at this explain this in a few seconds like upload uh, images or videos so this is using also the not a real service in this case but a when in this case just as a relay uh, click on the video upload actually it's not where I wanted to I just share this with another where is it? Firefox browser So you see the, the video there has been added. So in my course, in my personal one, so in everything worked well, it might take some seconds. Where the servers on my education, there it is. So you see it's actually shared the, uh, the text, of course, the editor, but also if you add images and stuff like this, you can, uh, by using just the editor, you can go offline uh, add some materials if you want so if you create this and just recompile this and the video that I've now created isn't there so just like explain so just to get an idea so also this uh, is collaborative and the courses that you create afterwards are also collaborative uh, in a similar but different way so but now back to the schedule So yeah, I came from IPF, SIPNS, and there's this 
What you can do probably if you're using the Brave browser or Opera, they already embed this peer-to-peer -peer system so that you can probably like upload uh, a file, a presentation, I don't know, OEB, probably not this one. Ah. I just, okay, I'll share this. So it generates an uh, IPF address, but here's the problem, or oh, this is a bit of uh, a thing uh, with IPFS, uh, IPNS. So the readme uh, document, if I open this, so this is now shared with me in my browser, but if you look at the status, it, where the peers, so it's slow actually, it might take up a few minutes or even half an hour or something to seed uh, this content or to make it available in different nodes so that you, if you root or you want to access this, so you have to prepare earlier. So, or like in my case, because it's on my machine, I know that this is aware and I, what I've done earlier is probably, so we'll look at the data, so these are my today today's imports. And there's this layer script. I'll just wait a second. So this is just uh, one thing with uh, the break browser. It doesn't allow I'll just wait a second. Copy the link. What kind of programming languages are you in this use? So JavaScript or it's used like Python stuff? Yeah, Python and C Sharp and we have a development server actually with multiple programming languages running and you can just like with those macros and libraries you can use ex execute uh, C, C++, C Sharp, Java, V, uh, R. that will next uh, month we will have a, a user online meeting if you want to attend so with some yeah hope to share some user stories just like a two-hour online meeting and if you want to attend uh, it's free and online so okay just I s uh, screwed up actually uh, in this case with the IPFS uh, so it takes a bit so but yeah the idea is clear so y we don't uh, need to centralize I don't need to pay for it actually as long as my laptop is running I can use this IPFS network uh, to share also my content but it takes some time actually uh, and there we also made a, a course if you want to uh, here's a little explanation where you can share your content via the Tor network so via the Tor browser via onion share it might sounds scary why the hell should someone share educational content or something else via this uh, criminal web uh, via the dark web there's actually uh, so I demoed it in here so but and here's a bit uh, what you need to do so uh, but the idea is just that we had in mind is just like in Afghanistan where the uh, Taliban are building like uh, the 4G network with the help or the 5G network with the help of the Chinese government but uh, the actually idea is just to for surveillance uh, actually but you can use also this tour network to it's just a text file that you have to transfer somewhere to another uh, site and with the onion share 
uh, just this tool you can do this also by using the uh, Tor network you just share freely just in the same way you only create a new onion URL and uh, you share this with your students and they can import this uh, read this co uh, course or load this course once go offline and the content is there within their browser and uh, never again online or something like this Uh, schools I'm actually not aware of but I think in Brazil there has been a university that uh, was doing their uh, computer science course and they skipped entirely to uh, Leo script oh. uh, it's a decentralized system so you do not know all courses of course <laughs> 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 okay, another one in order to complete overview so, so in this way it's a kind of discovery job uh, yeah and then was a, a professor from when the COVID uh, started actually a professor from Germany Germany was saying hey you're using Google Analytics I, uh, this way I cannot uh, just we wanted to know because when Google uh, when the pandemic started I actually also increased our usage of, oh there's a, uh, some teachers uh, from uh, math uh, schools or somebody using this offer to create a math course uh, quite interesting but he uh, just said I cannot use this uh, if they store some contents or some doing some analytics uh, on a foreign server in my course so and we skipped it so we are totally blind we are unaware who is using this uh, Leo script so actually you can fork the website also by your own and do the same uh, with your uh, yeah as your course so another one uh, that you can probably just uh, use it's just like uh, the web torrent project so and this is quite the uh, idea that it's a re-implementation of the original torrent uh, uh, network but entirely browser-based using WebRTC and if you uh, want to explore this you can probably go to instant.io and since this user needs to uh, ne needs also WebRTC so uh, in your normal uh, network it will work but what you can do is just like upload the web uh, where is the image I don't know what I'll upload there. So just an image and just share this link. Just to go to the Firefox uh, with someone else. So actually I can download this, but this can be also be quite heavy stuff like videos so they can directly start actually uh, to see or to watch the video but in this case it's uh, like an uh, instant screaming so you just need the to uh, web torrent network actually to create uh, to find a connection I will show uh, describe this later on and afterwards it's just like the content is just uh, loaded or downloaded from one browser to another one so there's a direct connection you don't have to store this entirely or wait until Dropbox is ready or something like this or another one but it's just like you share it if the content is hot probably you share it with another colleague or friend or within the classroom so the download time will actually be much faster because then afterwards just like in the peer-to-peer -peer network uh, it will discover oh there's another one who has a part of this content I will take this part from this one like in IPFS also and I'll download the first I don't know 250 bytes uh, from this peer and then the 500 from this one and the more you have the more uh, within the uh, web torrent network actually the faster you download upload the content so it's just an like easy way to share and if you have a library you can also add this functionality to your application so that in the future hopefully the script courses can also be shared via this web torrent network so the link is just another one so it starts with the magnet URI. So these are just like ideas for uh, the last one, but I will not show it. You should try out the Aggregor browser. I don't know, but they implemented actually any kind of peer-to-peer -peer network that's available, like IPFS, Hyperdot, and stuff like this. And it's like uh, it's uh, like an awesome project. If you, if I would build my or the applications only for this browser, uh, so I would have no problems actually to connect to everyone. So we can directly connect, create websites, and everything within the browser. So it's actually really, really. Uh, great project so you can try around or uh, have a look at it uh, at Agora Move the project so and another one 
So what we want to do now is just like in the l last minutes, create a classroom. And so uh, is it actually possible? So just directly from peer to peer. Uh, to so you're aware of this client server architecture, probably just like you have a server in the middle or a couple of them and you distribute, everyone has to connect. Uh, even if you're doing some kind of online chatting or something like this, so everything goes through this server and he distributes this. So the idea is, it's also quite easy. This server has a uh, URL, you can find this, uh, you can remember the URL, you can connect quite easily. And that is peer-to-peer, uh, -peer. looks a bit different. So what we want to do now within the classroom experience where we create a uh, layer script classroom is actually we have a, a loosely coupled mesh network probably that we need to build up so but with direct peer-to-peer -peer connections you can try this out if you want to just uh, 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 I created here a link for you where we can actually create some kind of what was it uh, of course I don't know someone's interested in Sebastian Okay, I'll do so. <laughs> Just wait a second. No, 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 no. I won't open it again. Just I uh, connect to this classroom, and then now another thing has appeared. So where was it? The classroom. In this case, I use the gun uh, DB as a distributed database uh, in this case uh, there is also other solutions uh, are available if you want to connect to so there Sebastian appeared so there's another one I'll create another one too like this I simply copy the URL so what we did now is just like we have a course that's stored on github that's representing this little OE uh, classroom with some quizzes and surveys. Uh, and when I create a classroom, oh actually, you can choose between different like in back ends, like a peer-to-peer -peer system based on uh, web torrent, uh, matrix, and you can do the configuration, Idris afterwards, popping up some commercial stuff, but GAN is actually quite easy. So, and the URL, you can create a, your own room name identifier in this case. Uh, so I use the OB. This is the room that we meet. So it's nothing fancy at all. We have here now this chat. And you see it should also appear on your slides. And if you do, probably this was uh, the question. Uh, if you do some kind of quiz, so what is the uh, language that you have learned, so the system, it's called Lea script. so there's another one, hello Lea script. thanks, whoever this is, and <laughs> so you can either explore this, I, I don't know, try to check, 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 and then it works, so what was the solution, ah, Lea script. so I resolved it, uh, like there are two persons, uh, as you can see, I do now click probably on yes. So is it possible that browser can directly uh, communicate to each other? So there's uh, one that did it after in the first trial. One clicked on to resolve. If I do the same here, I don't see the results. I actually have to attend the room with my personal data. If I've uh, not created some of mine, uh, the other ones does not show theirs to me. You know, it's just like uh, the idea. So I can like type in Leo script check this so uh, and this appears so it's just one that resolved and how does a quiz look like so we can the chat actually if you have learned the, the script syntax so when uh, we've lost one person is actually also taken markdown the script syntax you can add also quizzes if you want to uh, like or you can do like how does a quiz look like is this easy so we probably you know, of course you see the solution uh, yes so another one no I'll just send this and this is 
basic idea. So also those quizzes are created in a simple, or surveys in a, in a simple way. Syntax actually just with a few clicks SQL. So you can have different types of quizzes actually if you want to have them. And no, and if you want to, you can also have like surveys. So with a, they look similar to quizzes. Ah, I'm still in the chat, sorry. If you will have like your whole syllabus and all, like all the course material in the PDF, for example, uh, would it be possible to upload it to this and generate like the code for you? Mm -hmm. What do you mean by generate like the code? If, if you already have written out all the, uh, all the texts and stuff and, and all the headings, and, uh, but you want to make it interactive in this way, um, if, if, if you would uh, import like the, the PDF or, or copy paste the, the text, which is already recognized if you have um, defined the heading in Word, for example. And uh, yeah. uh, you mean ah, you mean if I directly uh, copy the text from PDF, so and then it yeah. Uh, yeah, no, at the moment not. That's uh, not okay. Okay. If you're interested, the classroom that I've shared was this one, this classroom MD. So it's basically just like uh, this options that I give to you. This is a, these are the options. You can uh, like a radio button at once, and this is a quiz with an X. So and if you have a text input, and there are also other options. But if you're aware of this syntax, you can create or combine this with any kind of markdown, and that's just like the basic idea. So, and what's also possible, if you have want to have like these learning nuggets as i said I, where's the life in Twitter? i go on i create a new note probably my test i can do some surveying in here so where are the quizzes So probably like this, and I want to share this. I want, don't want to store this everywhere. So what you can also do is like, we try to be as agnostic as possible. You can click on this data URI. So it's, it's still, it's basically it's only text. And if it's a little piece of text, it's stored. The content can be stored within the URL directly. So and if you can either share this within another, uh, with another browser or uh, create simply a new course your URL is a bit ugly, but it's actually representing my test. You can also open the classroom in there. So if you just want to prepare some learning nuggets or something like this, where is it stored? Within the email that you share or within the uh, chat uh, protocol or Twitter or wherever you share this URL. So the content is then there. So it's encoded within the URL. Uh, it should, well it depends uh, if this WebRTC is probably, if these Nokia uh, phones, uh, they have problems, they are not, uh, or the, these Edge phones, they do not support WebRTC probably, so you have to switch to GunDB, uh, which creates a direct connection actually, but other, uh, depends on the amount, if you want to have something more professional, you can use PubNub in this case, so you can use it for free uh, to a certain amount, but you, if you pay for a little bit of amount for money of it, you can have more than probably hundreds of uh, users in this case for sharing the content. So the last thing that I wanted to share with you is this has this WebRTC and this exchanging of um, a, a state actually works. So in the easiest way, WebRTC, what the browser is aware of is uh, this web real-time communication. So this is actually not in most cases true. So it's not a direct connection, but we still need some kind of server. But the server just can handle uh, 
billions uh, or not millions, uh, larger amounts. It just needed to create or establish the connection. So in this case, just need a signaling server. There are some you can host them for your own, and they are for free, or you can use a free service. And then just else with the intent I want to create, you have to create some a meeting point, like in our case, this a certain URL. So where you meet at this server or something like this, so you, where you have to identify yourself. And this is sent to the signaling server, so I can do this audio, video format, uh, codecs and stuff like this. So then this receive is received by Bob. Yeah, uh, it's actually also sending, okay, these are my possible connections in there. So if we are in the closed network, you can directly connect with each other if you're on the same network actually. Otherwise, uh, if you are distant, you need to get the external IP address, but this is everything is done for you. So after this exchange, you can most cases have a direct connection or an indirect connection where you still rely on some kind of service like a turn server. And uh, so there's another one uh, explaining this so that WebRTC can be in the background quite difficult. There's actually, there's a uh, talk or a chat uh, by two Google developers that also complain about the complexity of WebRTC on the background of handling. Last point, CRDTs. So if we want to have some kind of, if we want to create classrooms where multiple users uh, have a shared state and we don't have a central authority. So the thing is that we can use this idea of conflict-free replicated data types. And it's just like uh, the idea that uh, certainly uh, somewhere in the future they might uh, if there is no connection lost, actually, all might connect to the or have the same yeah, state, actually. So you can have multiple replicas, uh, in this case, all their guarantees, so inconsistencies are resolved, and uh, they are guaranteed to eventually coverage, uh, converge. So the idea to get the idea is probably to create a distributed counter. So in this case, where this could be also the editor. So think of just like we have five. Uh, persons are peer-to-peer -peer network that have a common uh, text file and they edit it in different, uh, different positions or points actually and we want to uh, we need to uh, get those states together if you have this in a pointer probably Bob creates adds to a counter a 5 transmits this to Alice Alice adds 1 to its counter this information is lost so Bob adds like for 2 the new state of this counter will be 7 and this two operation is also connected of course this one isn't aware of this uh, at one information was lost so he's on the state of six and uh, still in the of eight so if you think of this like if two it's still difficult in this case if you have four three five synchronization is quite can be a challenge in a distributed network so the idea those uh, to rethink those data types so if we want to have, uh, like we are using now, sets probably. So this is the idea uh, of these uh, CRDTs. So we have a set uh, where Bob has its counter, Alice has its back counter, Bob adds five to it, translates this. And if you want to get the counter, you have to add this. What Alice added, what Bob has added. The information gets lost. Bob adds its seven, translates its counter or its change. So this one has the correct state, uh, but this one isn't aware of Alice state. So if they somewhere in the future can exchange those information again or uh, will, uh, will have the same information that will result in the same state. So this is for the counter, it's quite tricky, but these data types also used for text editors or if you've seen this for sharing, if you did this with the video uh, uh, images, those are also encoded into these CRDTs that we exchange. If you're interested in, there are two libraries uh, available. We use this YJS. So it's also open source. And last button, please, just to have a glimpse on it, all the technology that we have used so far. So our latest part is also to share, well, ideas to share also hardware. Also in a peer-to-peer -peer manner. Okay, um, three more minutes. Uh, just like the cross lab, I will skip this. We have been involved into development of the address system, which is actually a centralized server, which allows or enables um, the com communication or sharing uh, hardware only by using the browser as the communication infrastructure. So in this case, but uh, one thing that there is, so it's you can have live classrooms, allow students to remotely uh, access remote hardware, probably uh, you can customize or configure your classes, your classrooms. 
and uh, so it still re requires a server that needs to be hosted somewhere and we with the expertise that we uh, have gained uh, over the past several years with those CRDTs, distributed web something, created something that looks totally the same, we call this address light, uh, but it's based on the same ideas, it's just a browser app uh, and the connection is also established peer-to-peer. -peer. So if we go to this, I can show you, here's the project and the website so is the probably here we have some couple of libraries and if we want to create a new library probably I, or a new classroom I mean I just at uh, this create a new classroom so it's nothing actually as fancy but so we can like in the script search from different uh, modules that you can embed into it or you can have a I've created once a classroom and that I will already want to share with others so I just restore this from my personal library upload this say there is this little script course within and if I want to share this hardware probably as you can see I just need to open this uh, within a station mode the same thing okay so I can pose up I'll create something like a local server everything works well Oh, I'm sorry, I got the wrong camera, so this is showing me, not the station in there. But actually, what I've now created, I have a, could share uh, the access to this terminal, to this code editor, and also to the camera if I've cor uh, correctly adapted it. I can just like uh, program in there. I can invite others just by sharing this uh, URL, and they can do something like just program. Like run the code the code is sent to this terminal server and you can see the result and there's something added to it so it's just like an easy way and we hope to add this functionality also to Leo script but like the last thing that we want to we wanted to first we wanted to create educational content so that everyone is able to create this with Leo script then we want to bring students together or learners within those classroom features and now we want to allow them to share also uh, like laboratories their hardware actually with the same technologies serverless distributed browser based okay that's it thank you very much <laughs> thank you so much okay, thank you. Yeah, very nice. yeah.